What's up guys, Kevin from Basie here talking sports with y'all today, and uh, today we're going to talk about a, a topic that hits a little bit closer to home for me. Yeah, UCLA basketball. Today I witnessed what I can only say is one of the biggest abominations in, in basketball. UCLA was up 17 with 6 minutes left and lost at home to Utah. Yeah, I mean, it's part for the course. They were 12 and 11 coming into the game. Hadn't played ball all season. So, loss to Utah is not overly shocking. But the fashion that it happened is a disgrace to what once was one of the most hallowed programs in basketball. With eight seconds left, UCLA was up three. And uh, Utah was inbounding the ball. For some reason, unbeknownst to me, Murray Berto decides that, heck, we should foul the other team and give them two free throws. They're already in the double bonus. So Jalen Hands comes in, and with seven seconds left, fouls Utah's best free throw shooter. Shockingly, he makes both. And shockingly again, we struggle to inbound the ball. No timeouts left, and get it to Singleton in the corner. Singleton... It's fouled, and wow, what do you know? One of the worst free throw shooting teams in the nation. Yeah, UCLA is the 347th best free throw shooting team in the nation. You know, there's like 360 teams in the NCAA. Yeah, we're bad. Wow, we missed a free throw. And then they go down and hit a blizzard beater. So let, let me break down for you guys why this was such an abomination. One, like I said, we're one of the worst free throw shooting teams in the nation. I think we're shooting like 61% from the line. And our coach decides that when we're up three, they have to go the length of the court and hit a three-pointer to just tie it to overtime, that it makes sense to foul them, to extend the game, and make us have to make more free throws. Yeah, UCLA had already missed six free throws in the last four minutes. They missed... Eight free throws for the game and seven in the last four minutes. And we wanted to get into a free throw. We, we wanted to say, oh, we're going to make more free throws. Yeah. yeah, you know what ended up happening there is Utah loses two seconds. So they, they're inbounding the ball 5.9 seconds left. And now instead of being down three, they're down two. And a three-pointer all of a sudden wins in the basketball game. That is awful. Awful coaching. And it doesn't excuse this, the seven missed free throws in the last four minutes by the players. Now, that's bad. But some of that falls on the coaches, too. This team should not be 12-12, and 12, sitting ninth in the Pac-12. The last two seasons, 2017, UCLA, fifth best recruiting class in the nation, behind Duke, Kentucky, Arizona, and Missouri. This year, 2018, the sixth best recruiting class in the nation behind Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, LSU, and Oregon. Three five stars in the starting lineup between Moses Brown, Chris Wilkes, and Jalen Hans. And this team is 12 and 12. That is a testament to how bad the coaching is in Westwood. This is one of the most talented teams in the nation. And we're 12 and 12 and 9th in the Pac-12. Little development has been shown across the board. Somehow, we have one of the worst free throw shooting teams in the nation, which, as we previously discussed, not for lack of talent. And you, you can't sit there and say, well, maybe we just recruited all the bad free throw shooters in the nation. you telling me... That to have the fifth and sixth best recruiting classes, we somehow chose all the bad free throw shooters. Coaches, you gotta get your players to make free throws. And what were we doing late in that game? For some reason, we don't play Moses Brown all game, which interesting decision. He hasn't played well all season, so I I, I think it's a justifiable choice. But then. With 5.9 seconds left, and them having to go the full court to get a shot, we somehow, for some reason, put Moses Brown in the game? Yeah, the, the seven-footer who was practically immobile? 
We want him running around with all these wings and guards trying to guard somebody? What, what is his purpose on the floor? What do you think they're going to... They're not going to post it up. They have 5.9 seconds to go the length of the court. And you're putting Moses in then? Why? Oh, and, and also, about 35 seconds left. One of the most important defensive possessions of the game. Suddenly, Murray des Barto decides to take out Jalen Hans and Chris Wilkes, the two best players on the team, and put in three freshmen. Jules Bernard, David Singleton, and... Uh, and Chris Smith, who I believe is actually a sophomore. Why are you taking your best players out in that situation? It makes absolutely no sense. And for five minutes at the end of the game, I actually missed Steve Alford. That's how bad the coaching was down that stretch. To give up 61 points and a half to Utah at home... Yeah, there's issues in in Westwood. There's problems with those Bruins. Look, I'm a UCLA fan, through and through. But outside of uh, Lonzo Ball just taking over the program for a year, leading to a 31 season, this program's been a joke. And uh, people can point to the three six three sixteens in the last five years. But our best season, with Lonzo Ball winning 30 games... You only win, go to the Sweet 16? We haven't been a relevant basketball program in 10 years. Going back to the Final Four appearances with Russell Westbrook, Kevin Love, and Co. We need to get a coach. And quite frankly, coaches we've had are not cutting it. And the players out there, they, I mean, clearly need to play better. And yes, I know it's a young team. But there are young teams all across the nation playing far better than UCLA right now. Westwood, UCLA, it's four letters that appear in a history book. They don't mean anything in college basketball right now. It's been one of the worst programs over the last 10 seasons. And yes, they've competed for a Pac-12 championship here and there. But is that the standard of UCLA basketball now? Competing for a Pac-12 championship? Is that the standard? I, I, I thought the 11 banners hanging in, in the Raptors meant something more. We were supposed to be competing for national championships, not hoping that we might be able to sneak in and, and win the Pac-12 tournament. Showing development getting players to buy into a system. And all I saw out there today was five players on a court playing for themselves, not playing as a team, giving up wide open threes, mailing it in when we thought we had it won. That's coaching. And it needs to get better. Now, who's going to take the UCLA job? I don't know. I don't know who wants to step into this mess right now. Heck, there's a lot of talent. But you're going to be placed with the expectations of Wooden and, and all that he did for the program. And quite frankly, in 23 years, we haven't won a national championship. 1995 was the last time. And before that, 75 with Wooden. Look, I love UCLA basketball. But in the last 40 years... One championship. We're the doormat of the Blue Bloods. Duke, Kentucky, North Carolina, Villanova. All have championships in recent memory to, to count for their status. We haven't made it past the Sweet 16 in a long time. Something needs to change in Westwood. I'm not sure what it is, but we can start at the top. Coaching. Coaching was missing tonight. And without a good coach in Westwood, it's never going to turn around. You can keep bringing in top five recruiting classes, but unless you get them to play as a cohesive unit, it's not going to matter. Until we wisen up and figure out how to coach in the last two minutes of a basketball game, 
All the talent in the world doesn't matter. Lonzo Ball is the only thing that saved this program from fading into obscurity. That's it. Hey, first four appearance last year. Alfred's gone, but nothing's changed. And yes, I know Murray Barto is just an interim coach. But it's par for the course for UCLA. Another ho-hum, disappointing season. And I don't see it ending anytime soon. For the sake of all you UCLA basketball fans, I sure hope it does change. I'm hoping they can bring in a coach that's going to revamp this system, who's going to get the talent to buy in. But right now, those odds look long. Something's got to change in Westwood. It's up to Dan Guerrero to make the right decision coaching-wise. Because the coaching or lack thereof has cost this program.